I'd heard the stories about him. He is the most lethal sniper in US military history. And he hit this shot, the longest shot in Iraq, 2,100 yards. And you're just like, 2,100 yards is like a mile. Bradley and what he did, I think it's just so special. He caught the spirit of this guy. I went down to meet Chris in 2010. He was at a ranch in Texas. He thought it was kind of a joke. He didn't know why anyone would want to make a movie about him. And uh, it, it wasn't something that he took very seriously at all. I think we think, I guess erroneously, from the outside, you're a Hollywood screenwriter, the doors just fly open, like, oh, of course we want to share. But right. there are times when, especially with someone like Navy SEALs, they're just, right. no thanks. Well, no thanks, and you're talking to a guy who just got home from war. He was uncomfortable with the fame, and he was uncomfortable with all that, that notoriety. I kept asking, why won't he talk to me? And I said, well, he's a sniper. He said some ways for it to develop. And I knew, I knew that these guys, you know, they get drunk and they wrestle. I don't drink, so I kind of had to, I had to, I had to wrestle. Really? I threw him in a front headlock, and I threw him down to the ground, and I roughed him up a little bit. You earned your respect with him. Right. And, but after that, as, as I stood up, he's like, you're all right. What do you want to know? Now the most wanted man in Iraq. The 180,000 on your head, congrats. Well, don't tell my wife. She might take that number right now. <laughs> Considering the man and the book and turning it into a movie, what for you were, became the most important parts of the Chris Kyle story that you had to have on the big screen? When I met Chris and when I looked in his eyes, I saw turmoil. I saw a guy who wasn't home yet. You know, he was nine months out of the war, but I, I didn't feel like he'd gotten home from the war. Now, what was the cost? His journey and, and what he went through and everything he sacrificed. I do it for you, you know that I do to protect no, you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I'm here. Your family is here. Your children have no father. Well, you'll have to serve my country. You don't know when to quit. You find a way. You have to. managed to use it for the good, you know. He managed to use it to make the other soldiers feel safe. He managed to use it to write this book to give the money back to the families of his fallen brothers. Miss, drains us to the right. Come on, you can do better than that. Well, we take care of each other, right? Well, let's see if you can't hit two in a row. You know, we often talk about film as entertainment, and it is a very entertaining film. But there are sometimes more that can be achieved with movies. Uh, in particular, this film and what it might mean to those suffering with PTSD is remarkable. Then we did something good. Chris was this, Chris, they called him the legend. He was the larger than life war hero. Uh, and I think if guys can look at him and be like, if that guy was able to go ask for help, if he needed help and was able to go seek it, then it's okay for me to admit that I don't feel okay. You got some sort of savior complex? I just want to get the bad guy.